Hi, I'm Dr. Drew, and this is Dr. Drew After Dark. Please be advised that Dr. Drew After Dark may contain sexually oriented content and be unsuitable for young children. Hey, and welcome to Dr. Drew After Dark, everybody. Uh, we appreciate those voice messages at 818-253-1693, so keep them coming, and also the emails. We've got a whole bunch of them to get in today. It's, of course, drdrewafterdark at gmail.com. And uh, don't forget to uh, check out everything at drdrew.com, the Dr. Drew podcast, the Adam and Drew, the Midday Live. It's all there, plus the Opium series, so please check it out at drdrew.com. I'm not going to spend any more time on any of that stuff because I'm so excited to get to our guest. It's the great Nikki Glazer. Nikki, hey. yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I've been trying to get you in here for the longest time. <laughs> that's what I've heard. I'm so flattered. Uh, because you're one of my favorites. Thank Lisa. you. I can't believe this. I, I can't believe I'm one of Dr. Drew's favorites. It's I love true. you. It's it true. means a lot to me. It's true. In fact, I emailed you after one of your stand-up specials, which I thought was yeah. so good. Yeah, man. Now, how many have you done since that one? Um, I've done a half hour and another half hour, and then on, and and then I just shot an hour, and it's coming out October first. But yeah. what I could, what I, what I was admiring was how, and I don't want to use a word that could be misinterpreted. It, tight it was. That's a Thanks. better word. I mean, you had it like it was like yeah, it was. I, <laughs> Thank it was you. Done. And I don't like uh, prepared. I think was another good word for I it. I don't like going very long without a laugh when I'm yeah. on stage. I can do it. Uh, I just I don't. I'm un people go. It's so rapid fire, and you just have joke after joke, and it's like it's it's me being insecure in the silence. I don't want to. I don't want to ever disappoint anyone. I need they're there to laugh, and I just get very uncomfortable. I don't. I'm I, I'm not one of these comedians that can set take you on a journey, and then there's a huge payoff. I want there to be payoffs along the way. I did not. I have watched comedians where I thought to myself, "It's it's too 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 much machine gun." I do not think that when I watch your stuff. Thank you. I do not think. Thank that. you. But so I bum rushed uh, Nikki at her t radio show. Yes. Well, well, tell you, give your plugs out first. Yeah, so. my um, my radio show. I have it every day on uh, Sirius XM channel ninety five, Comedy Central Radio. It's from ten to twelve uh, Eastern. So if you have Sirius or um, a rental car, check it out. <laughs> And then uh, I have a podcast of that show, which comes out every Friday. It's called the You Up Podcast. And um, and I have a special called Bangin' on Netflix. N brand new special. I don't know when this comes out, but I think it's, uh, yeah, Bangin'. It's up is right about now? Yeah. Oh, I can't wait. Yes. And, um, and I'm going to have another 15-minute uh, Netflix thing uh, with the de Degenerates in December. So just a lot of stuff. Great. Good for you. And then Thank you're you. then you're touring. You go to your website. Yes, NikkiGlazer.com for okay. tour dates. Constantly Excellent. on tour. Do you like doing comedy? Yeah, I love it. Do you love it? Okay. Yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll get into that. In I think. But but I um for uh, Nadav in the the room next door, I bum rushed uh, Nikki's radio show. Yeah. No. I just I literally she it's all it's serious. It's all glass. Yeah. And you can see people walking by and stuff. And I'm like, let me in, let me no, in. I'm coming you in. You just waved gingerly through the glass. And I, I ca called you in. Waved me in. Waved you in. And you Air said. Air traffic control. One of the funniest fucking things. Oh, no. What did I say? Yeah, I was, I was, I laughed about it. I, yesterday, we brought it up again, <laughs> me and my wife. You were talking about um, vaginal swelling after sex. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you want to. Spell I don't it out remember or what I said. I use the Hitachi wand too much. And when I use the Hitachi wand, my puss swells up so cartoonishly. <laughs> it's so wild. It doesn't happen to girls in porn. The same things that I do to myself, I see done to girls in porn. And it doesn't give them this effect. Mine, it looks like a squid. It you looks like a, a little baby squid. You it said looks a like squid? A, it looks like a tiny squid. And my labia stick out like little like... It looks, one time I was with my boyfriend, my ex-boyfriend and I go, look at this. It looks like, it just looks like a squid. He was like, it really does, like and, identical. And you said you tried hiding like, it. It stung you me, piss on you, me. You tried yeah. hiding, but then you thought I'm, I'm, I'm going in with Yeah, it. I just don't care anymore. It is what it is. You also said it looked like a jellyfish. Yeah, that's and, it. It just looked like a jellyfish squid type thing. And then just, I, I had to sort of interpret that. I thought, do you mean like those man of wars with the big sails on it? <laughs> like two sails side by yes, side? Yes, that is what I meant. <laughs> it looked, it looked. It swells up, so each side is swollen, and then the my labia also swelled up, so it looked like the the tentacles coming out. It just looked like it Nadab, looked like an adorable picture of a man of war jellyfish, please. A, an adorable squid. Adorable Ador squid jellyfish. Or, or, yeah, man of war. Let's see what. No, no, no not adorable, adorable squid. Give no, 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 oh, that's no, not no, what no, it looked no. like. Man of war jellyfish. Man of war. Like, man. let's see man of war. Let's see man of war. That might be exactly what it. Yeah, there it is. is. Man of war jellyfish. 
There we go. Right? Mm, <laughs> that wasn't the big no, fan on it. No, you put no, put those side by quite. side, two of those. I think squid. <laughs> I think squid was more like it. But it it. How about the guy in the middle, the orange one? So much. Oh, that could actually be it. Yeah, it's a yeah that's it. A little closer. Okay. That's. It just looked. I mean, is this cuttlefish? <laughs> kind of like that. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it was just. It's crazy. Who, I wish who back there suggested cuttlefish? That's that was so my idea. Okay, yeah, I mean, you nailed, you nailed it. I think the guy in the lower right there is probably yeah, it, right? Yeah, I mean. Yeah, right color and everything. It's good. Yeah, it's like Bane's mask or whatever. Bane's mask. Yeah. Yes, yes. So, so that kept me laughing for literally two weeks. So I thank you thank for that. Thank you. So. Yeah, giant squid. There we go. Well, oh. it's not that one. Yeah, too many tentacles. Come on, guys. Too many. Yeah, yeah, too many. It just says two. Yeah, that's what the, the cuttlefish has two main ones. So, you know, one of the things we talk about here is why people get into comedy. And um, let's talk about your coming up. Where'd you grow up? I, came, I grew up in Cincinnati, Ohio until I was six. And then we moved to St. Louis, Missouri. How come? Uh, my dad got a job. Doing? Cable industry uh, mm. sale. Uh, he was a VP of sales. And then you moved around more after that, right? No. No? Just St. Louis after that. And how was St. Louis growing up? It was great. It was. I had the best uh, childhood. I really. Li What's, yeah. The, something's wrong already. Hang on. Okay. Cannot compute. Yeah. I mean, I really had a great time. I grew up. I went to public school. I was at uh, Catholic school until I was in first grade. And then my parents pulled me out of that, put me in public school, and um, and I had a great time. I had great friends. I was never as popular as I wanted to be. Um, I felt you know, not as pretty as I wanted to be, and that was kind of like. You know, that was the bummer, but I was having a good time. Did you say you had a sister that you... He had a really beautiful sister that didn't get beautiful until I was in middle school. She was always like the fat one and I was the skinny one. And then I remember one time I was like, she was teasing me about having buck teeth and I was teasing her about being fat because that was our go-tos. And she goes, everyone knows that fat kids turn into skinny adults and skinny adults turn into... Or skinny kids turn into fat adults. So you're going to be fat someday. And I just remember being like... Is that true? And then it kind of happened. It kind of, <laughs> she nailed it. So about, she was in sixth grade, I was in eighth grade and she just blossomed that mm. year. And um, and I, that was when I was like becoming the ugliest version of myself that I think I ever was. Mm. And I just- That's about right for everybody, right? Couldn't eighth figure grade, it out. Yeah, eighth, yeah. Eighth, seventh, eighth grade, I just, it took a dive. And, um, and then my sister was just so beautiful and never really went through an awkward phase. And I mm. resent her to this day for it. Reasonably. Yeah. No. Yeah, it was just not fair. And, and was that why you started searching for ways to get attention and found comedy? Um, I think that I just, uh, yeah, I had no value. And so I was like, I have to come up with something that will. I was always like, I had really dark thoughts as a kid. I just remember a lot of times people being like, why would anyone, why would you say that out loud? That like was what? Um, I remember in sixth grade one time. Jellyfish we, vagina. Yeah, I mean, it never was sexual. But it was just morbid. I yes. would just think about like, yeah, not yet. Um, I, I just remember pitching some stroke. My dad was helping me with my, my homework and I had to come up with some, uh, we had to write our own chapter to this story. And my story was like, it involved elderly abuse and for mm. no reason. And my dad was like, that is really weird. Why would you have this kid be so mean to this grandma and like hit her? So it was something really dark. And I was like, I don't know, cause I'm fucked up. And then, so that made me kind of just not want to ever create or or tell people and i'm one yeah it did get sexually kind of weird i remember one time i was like we were watching ice skating and i said that i could see this guy's dick how old were you i was sixth grade fifth grade and i was like mom you can see his dick and she was like you never say that word do not talk like that and i just remember being like okay done done expressing myself so my thoughts are evil yeah oh god yes was did the catholic school thing add to that um not not so much i didn't that didn't get in and my parents were both athe atheists and so i only went to catholic school because they didn't trust the public schools and as soon as they did they pulled me out of there and so i it was they stayed together yeah they're still together and they're great and um it was more i, w I was just terrified as a child i was constantly scared i was scared of everything my first my first multi-syllabic word other than mama dad that was dangerous and i used to say dangerous dangerous and point out things that were dangerous where do you and think that came from? I think it came from, well, I know where it came from. It came from my mom. Um, 
my dad would leave for work and we lived on a river when I was in Cincinnati. We lived on, my dad really loves the river and like the outdoors. And my mom, during the day, she wouldn't, she'd be so scared that I would go down to the river and drown that she would tell me, if you go down to the river, you'll die. You will die if you go down there. No questions asked. And so I just, and then my dad would come home and be like, let's go down to the river. And I'd be like, ah! <laughs> and he wouldn't understand why I was so scared, but it was because my mom kind of use that technique to to make it so I wouldn't do anything scary. And then my sister was just, she didn't have that same policy with my sister. So my sister would wander around everywhere and I constantly saw her almost dying. And so Ooh. I was in charge of like keeping her safe. Like what? What happened? Just, she would just like wander off and I'd be like, she's going to get hit by a car. She's going to get kidnapped. I was terrified of my sister being kidnapped as a kid. Did your terrified. mom pl play that one on you too? Probably about like for me, like you'll, yeah, there was, it, but it wasn't, they, I didn't feel like they were watching my sister enough. And I was the one responsible for that. So I, I really uh, took that on um, a lot. I was just scared of her. I was okay. I knew that I wouldn't be kidnapped because I was an ugly child. But I was also, but I was so scared that she was going to get scooped up. And, and did you have uh, grandparents around or anything? I wonder where the elder. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I don't know where that came from, but um yeah, I had a, I was I had a great relationship with both my grandmothers and uh, didn't know one of my grandfathers because he died when my dad was a kid. And then the other one died, uh, was just like kind of distant and died when I was in fifth grade. Hmm. So mm -hmm. I was very scared of I was scared of aliens. I was scared of nuclear war. So you essentially you had an anxiety disorder, right? Oh, intensely. Yeah. And, and do you have it now? I'm not scared anymore of any, like I don't, I don't get scared really. But you have anxious anxiety? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, uh, me too. And does it make you depressed or if you're depressed, does the anxiety get worse? I think it makes me depressed. Makes I depressed. get, yeah, I struggle with really like just my depression can just come on so strong and it's usually because of something making me anxious. So I'd say the anxiety causes the depression mm -mm. Uh, as opposed, because then once I'm depressed, I'm very confident in my depression. It's not like, oh, it's just like, yep, I'm garbage. I hate my life. I don't want to be alive. Everyone's better than me. I'm everyone who thinks I'm good. I've tricked them into thinking that. You have not tricked me. Yeah, I know. That's the thing. I'm just an idiot. <laughs> I'm not just I know. I know. That's the thing. Is like when when my therapist used to say this imposter syndrome. She goes, well, who do you yeah. think you are that you're tricking all these people? You think you're that good? That you don't you don't think these smart people who have given you these jobs or or asked you on their podcasts you think they're you're fooling them and that that takes me out of it a little bit and helps me not. I mean the imposter thing is very normal, right? Sure. Yeah, but not to the point that I suck, I shouldn't live that kind of stuff. Yeah, that stuff is um it's it just sucks when it comes on because I know it's a, it, I know it's symptomatic of my depression. It's not me. It's it. I kind what of treat it, it as a flu. Yeah, um, smart. I, tr uh, it, what triggers it is whenever I have to focus on my looks, if I have an event coming up that requires me to go get a spray tan, to go get my nails done, to go get my makeup done, where I'm going to have to sit in front of a mirror for, for a very long time. Um, just any event where I have to look great. I get the couple days before I, I hit a depression where I get angry that men don't have to do this. I get angry that some women don't have to do it and they can just be comfortable with themselves and people go, why do you do it then? And I just feel trapped. I feel I should either be way uglier or way more pretty, but being in this middle ground is bullshit because I could be way hotter, so why wouldn't I? If hair and makeup is provided, and if I could go get a spray tan and be that much hotter, why wouldn't I do that? Um, and so there, because there's the opportunity to be hotter, I feel like I have to put in that effort to actually be my best because if I don't, why would I squander that opportunity? Um, and so, because at one point I am going to just be like unattractive because I'm going to age and it won't matter anymore. And then, I, then I'll look back and be like, oh my God, when you were, tw I mean, I already look back when I had a, a, my show Not Safe. I was like, girl, you were so young. And like, why didn't you try? I was like, no makeup. I just like dressed like a, like I didn't give a shit. I wasn't even, I didn't care about my looks so much when I had that show and I look back and I regret it because I'm like, oh, it would have been so much easier to look hot than it is today. And is that all from your sister stuff? It's from mom stuff. I mean, my mom constantly thinks she's ugly, never uh, good enough, never thin enough, uh, not always, never heard her say a nice thing about herself. Did she dump some of that on you? Not just about herself, but about you. No, 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 never, never. That's good. Um, 
it you know when she got drunk she would be like well you've gained some weight you know it, things would slip out like that but it was never you're ugly it was I didn't get a I didn't get reassured that I wasn't ugly it would just be like be happy with what God gave you when because I used to say to my mom why did you have me when you knew you knew you and dad have ugly genes in the family <laughs> why would you risk having sex and making me why did you do this you really what was your I, answer She'd go, Nikki, that is the dumbest thing I have ever heard. You sound so stupid. Don't say that. That is, that is mean to me. Be happy with what God gave you. Whereas opposed, opposed to um, you're crazy, you're beautiful, which I'm sure they said and I didn't let it in. But I just remember this, just accept who you are. And I refuse to accept it. I'm just like, it's doesn't, it doesn't seem fair. Why did my sister get all the good stuff? Why did she get clear skin? Why did she get straight hair? Why did she get straight teeth? Why did she get... Um, just like these, just, you know, wh why is it come so easy to her? And for me, it, it just didn't. It just, I just was so, I'm still so angry about it. I don't, and I'm so fortunate for how I look and, and my health, but I still am just like, it's, it, I get, when I get depressed, I get really, really um, angry at God or whatever for making me who I am. And it's, it's 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 sad to admit because the things I hear myself say, even two nights ago, I was crying in a Thai restaurant to my friends, being like, "I'm so ugly, I can't handle how ugly I am." Like, and now listening to myself say that, I'm like, "What are you talking about? Shut up!" It's like I don't even when that when those thoughts come on, it really do. It's like, guys, I I'm sick right now. I'm gonna be better tomorrow, but right now I'm sick. I'm. It's like the flu. Can you and you can wait it through. Yeah, I always get through it now because I just, um, I meditate. I instantly go, I got to go meditate. I got to go do my things that I know will get me out of it. So, so, so you know it's not real. It's something that just overcomes yes. you. Okay. Well, there's sometimes where that's the tricky thing though, is that sometimes you go, there's the mania of like, I, I know I'm right. And I'm finally seeing things clearly and don't tell me otherwise. And I want to, I want to stay in this m mindset because I know this is the right one. This is reality. This is reality. I was blinded before. This is who I am. And, um, you know, and I'm, n I'm not out of the woods with depression, but I, I know exactly if I just go meditate for 20 minutes, it gets me out of it. Is there anybody that can bring you out of that? Yeah. My friends, I, Female I know the friends. Yeah, female friends come over, male friends. I have, I have so many good friends that can snap me out of it and know what I need to do to get out of it. And my recovery time now is so much, my turnaround is so much quicker than it used to be. It used to be weeks of feeling like that. Now it's a day. Do you have gratitude for all you've created? Um, or the imposter thing still kick in? Uh, it's not the, I don't, I don't have the imposter thing anymore. I feel like I am really talented and I am really funny. Um, because I work hard enough to but be But don't you think things. your sister is jealous of that? Mm, sure. Huh. I, I'm sure at times that there's, uh, yeah, I'm so, sure. So gratitude for, you have a lot. But I've, I've that wasn't by chance. I feel like I worked for those things. You did work for them and you deserve them and yes. your talent is what you mind. Yeah. To give you these things. Whereas my sister and by the didn't way, have to work for her life. By looks. the way, you were enhancing uh, us, your audience, yeah. you know? I mean, yeah. you should look at it as giving at the same time. No, I am. That's one thing that I've found helps me so much is the amount in sharing these, in sharing this stuff, really, this really dark shit and having the feedback from men and women who it helps. That is what. That's really means a I'm lot. I'm not to just me. talking about this. I'm talking but about my, your your comedy is something that's a gift too that you yeah, share with people. I know. I I still don't get that. Yeah. It doesn't get through, but it's starting to. Yeah. I I it, I really try to listen to my fans when they tell me what I mean to them. And, and last time we spoke at length, there was a some funny business in your relationships. Yeah, there always is. I um. You know, I'm. I think I'm scared of really being loved. I just, I just don't think that I. Um, yeah, I'm. I don't. I don't trust someone who actually loves me, and like would be and would accept me for me. I'm just like, why would you? You know, it's it's really sad to say that because I know what I look like on the outside, and like, you're killing it, and you you're pretty, and you're funny, and you're you're powerful and all these things and it's I hate to pull that back and say that I don't feel any of those things but I 
it's hard for me to like someone who really appreciates me for all those things. And that's why you do some of that sabotaging stuff? Meaning what sabotaging stuff? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't... I. I don't sabotage myself in my career ever. I get what I want and I go after things that are kind of unachievable and I get them. Good. I'm talking about relationships. Relationships? I can't help what I'm attracted to and that's the problem. I wish I wasn't attracted but, but, to what but, I'm attracted to. Well, we're going to tell them what you're attracted to in a second. But but that attraction always often comes from like some sort of traumatic core, right? Right. And so you have to like get that unwired a bit. Yeah, I don't feel like... Uh, I never feel like I'm enough. And so I feel like the men I pursue, I want to convince them I'm enough because they already don't think I'm enough because I go after men who aren't that into me. And so men who do think I'm enough, I'm like, well, you're wrong. And so I'm not attracted to that. <laughs> Nothing sabotaging about that. Yeah, that is, that's exactly, you're right. Okay. Well, and, then, <laughs> and, then, uh, and then when you get a guy that mm-hmm. is enough and likes you, then then i want him to be i want him to maybe I, I don't need it but i'm turned on by the idea of him with another woman and then telling you all about and it and telling me about it which i always feel like it's it's a, some that sounds degrading to me not not i don't necessarily say in the phenomena is not degrading the way you're using it feels degrading to me. Really? It doesn't? Because you d- keep saying no, and I don't know why I feel that way so much. Yeah, I guess. Nikki and I talk about, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Nikki, Nikki, Nikki's fantasies all the time. So. Yeah, <laughs> I just, I think it's, it makes me feel like I'm getting, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a guy who's a prize that other women want. That yeah, but they, they can want him without actually having sex and then you hearing all the details. I, and I also want... You know, I, you nailed it. I don't feel like I'm enough. And I feel like they make asking a guy to only be with me is just an insane ask. And that um, I guess that's what it is. It's like you should be able to have keep having sex with people because that's your nature. And yeah, but then you want to hear about it. That, yeah, that would be one thing. The too. hearing about it is the degrading part. Um, no, I want to hear like a good time she had. Like, I don't want to hear like how hot was she? I don't really care about like comparing myself to her i just want to hear like what moves he pulled that like the like how they started what they how he got her how he wooed her like all the i just put in a porn (laughs) i mean i guess i could do that too i mean this hasn't i haven't been able to like actually live this as much as i want to but well you had guys tell them about their previous relationship yeah that's what i always want to hear is like what tell me about girls in the past like hot things that have transpired and like how that seems more benign okay yeah I'm, I'll, I, w- I would sign off on that as because you know these things that we're attracted to stay with us even if you get rid of the trauma and stuff yeah the things that turn us on still kind of turn us on so as long as they're not destructive then fine but yeah. telling him to go out to it, that gets destructive i very think fast. i don't want them to have sex but if i want i want them to be able to still um yeah, I don't know. I, it, 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 it's not something I need. It's just something that intrigues me and turns me on, and I can't help it. Is there any trauma? No, not that I've uncovered. Unco- I like I've tried. You know, I've tried to be like, was I? Did anything happen? The trauma that I can like, tr- the, you know, it's not huge. But my first kiss was like kind of rapey, Oof. and it was, and I didn't have my first kiss until I was seventeen. I was really scared of boys my entire life. Just scared. I just. W- I would see people kiss and I'd be like, I, no one will ever want to kiss me. I can't ever see myself being passionate. I just was like, how are my friends? I liked boys, but I was like, I can't ever imagine doing that. I just, I couldn't believe that, that you could kiss a boy. I just, I wanted do, to, but I couldn't put do, myself Do you there. know that that makes your friends sad to hear you say that? Yeah. You know that? No. Make, it makes me sad to hear that. Yeah. I don't know why. You don't have to live in that. Now I can see myself intimately with a man. Okay. But when I was a teenager, before it happened, it just took so long for it to ever happen. I never ever put myself in a situation where I could be alone with a guy where it could happen because I think I also feel, and which I still feel, is that if you start hooking up with a guy, you have to put his penis in you and in your mouth and everywhere. And if I change my mind at some point and I start kissing them and they taste bad or they say something that turns me off, too late, bitch. How do I you get gotta out of go. It? You won't be able to get out of it. You will have to go all the way through 
until he comes on you. And and now that's not true, right? No, that's not true. Okay, I good. send men away all the time. Oh, I just okay, send, like, put your penis back okay. in your pants and leave. <laughs> <laughs> I have no problem doing it. But also, that's not comfortable to do either. So I actually just avoid hooking up in in every way now. Well, you were saying that. You were on sort of a celibacy kick. Yeah. How come? Because I keep getting hurt by men, even when I don't sleep with them, even when I just, like, make out with them. I still am just like... And I think about them all day the next day and I'm thinking and then I, I can't get work done because I'm looking on Instagram if they've liked my thing and I'm thinking, what can I post on Instagram that will get their attention? And it's just like, well, this is why I don't have a late night show. It's because I fucking made out with a guy two months ago. Like, I think that men have really uh, deterred me from my they, they pull me away from work and my friendships and being uh, they're just they're distracting and they're uh, a waste of my time. And so, hmm. and so sometimes some people are very much that way, mm -hmm. right? And some men are that way too, but women a little more so, especially when there's real intimate contact, yeah. right? So your oxytocin goes off and estrogen yeah. makes you more receptive and all these things that. So, so it's something you have to manage, but going all one way or all the other is sort of flip side of the same coin. Right. I I know. I, I there's. Unless, Never unless there, a gray area. For, unless there's for me. a unless there's like a goal, like I'm doing specific therapy on this for the next six months, and I need to be celibate to make the therapy work. And well, I just I'm right now I'm celibate because I just don't want to be hurt by a guy. It just feels too bad, and it makes me a person who I don't like or recognize when I like a guy that doesn't like me. And I'm honestly disgusted by myself when I like someone who doesn't like me. I'm just like, I. I I hate myself when I when a guy isn't into me there it, it feels so terrible and I just would rather not even put myself out there to be rejected and just focus on work in the meantime just focus on work work yeah work is just a distraction from my feelings I'm addicted to working I never stop and I'm scared that it will stop if stop coming in if I stop accepting it so I never have a vacation because to, for a vacation, you have It'll to like plan away. ahead. It'll all go away. It'll too. all go away when you're when you're in the Bahamas. And, and, <laughs> and, well, the Bahamas has gone away now. It got away for you. Yeah. Uh, and, and you you once told me you thought you were a little addicted to sex. Is that still something you think, or is that? Yeah, I think I can really um, in a relationship I can be addicted to sex. In, in a, a relationship, yes. I mean, in is a relationship. that kind of a neediness? Is like like I have to feel reassured by that all the time? No, it's just like I want to get high. I want to. You just, get high from it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like, I just want to feel, or I don't want to feel my feelings. And so it's just like eating or smoking weed or how when I used to drink or when I go running, it's like I just don't have to think. If Gosh, I'm it all having sounds sex. trauma ish. Yeah, I know. And I don't know where. Did, it happened. But did they ever do any, you don't have to have an explicit memory. This, they can sort of work on the wiring of emotional regulation, hmm. experts in that. Yeah, I got it. I want to do some of that. Like EMDR or something. That's exactly what yeah. I want to do. Yeah. You have a therapist currently. Yeah. Yeah. She does like check in with your body kind of stuff. And I'm just like, I'd rather not. Can we just talk this out? I don't want to be my body. I'm not connected to it. Is that true? Yeah. I'm, I don't think I really am in touch with it. I really I've abused my body. I've I resent my body. I don't like my I'd, I'd like to not have a body. Hmm. Yeah. It's a bummer. Yeah. Because, yeah, I often say that. I'm just like, I wish I just didn't have a body. I wish I just could, like, not... I, I resent having to even wash myself. <laughs> like, I just... I really do. I, I, and being a woman, having a wo woman's body and in this business, it's just like, it just... It's never good enough. And I'm a, I'm a perfectionist. I really struggled this week weekend... Um, in a way that I haven't in a really long time. I did the roast of Alec Baldwin and I forgot two jokes. And I'm sitting in my chair. I get done. I killed. I had a great set. Couldn't have gone. Most people would think couldn't have gone better. And I go, yeah, it could have. Because I had two jokes that were amazing and I didn't do them. And I could not let it go. I could not enjoy myself the entire night. I just was like, I can't. You're so stupid. How did you forget those two jokes? You're so Like it just... I, and then I'm thinking, Nikki, there's no, there's no re, you can't retake the roast of Alec Baldwin. It happened. It's gone. Just forgive yourself and let it go. I cannot let it go. I will not stop punishing myself for it. And it's really unlike me recently to be, be this out of control with my thoughts and let my thoughts dictate my feelings so much because I've worked so hard in meditating the past year and a half that my thoughts have been, I've done like a lot of 
CBT, CBT and, and, and read books and worked on it. And this weekend, it just, I was like, if, if you treat yourself this poorly after having that good of a set, why are you in this business? Because that was, the, that was a career high and you can't enjoy it at all. And that, I'm at the after party just like, why did it? And people are like, amazing set. And I'm just like, I forgot two jokes. And they're like, what? Like, I sounded insane. It was not a good look. This isn't a good look. Jesus. <laughs> Producers are laughing. <laughs> well, I, I mean, it is because it's on. I mean, every I can relate to pieces of what you're saying. Mm -hmm. you, you just got you've got it all in big doses. Yeah, I'm so hard on myself. Is what I've been told. I don't think yeah. I'm hard enough on myself, but I've been told I'm very. You're so hard on yourself. That's what my therapist says every week. You're so hard on yourself, and I just don't. Are you connected to your therapist? What do you mean? Like emotionally, like deeply attuned. No. So you need that. I, I'm, it's, it's getting to the point where I have to go. You know, I was, she's new, so it's not. You might want to look for something called EFT, emotionally focused therapy. Okay. Yeah. Cause it, it feel, I'm not sure, but at least it would get somebody in your corner that you feel securely attached to. Yeah. I just, I've had some bad therapists. Yeah. In my, in my day. The CBT was a good idea. The, the, then the mindfulness, good idea. But I get, and, and the trauma thing stuff is a good idea. But I think a, a an EFT, emotionally focused person, might also be able to do trauma stuff with you too. Okay, good. Because it, it, it. it feels like there needs to be a place for you to retreat to that you can feel relief on a regular basis. And that needs to be in the context of a relationship, if that makes sense. Yes. You get that? Yeah, and, and and that then then you will internalize that, and then you'll start to look for that in your relationships out in the world too. Okay, makes sense. I think so. I mean, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna remember that, and that's yeah. what I'm gonna that's my homework now. Hey, we gotta take a little break from the show so I can tell you about our friends at Best Fiends. If you are looking for a fun way to pass time while engaging your brain, I love this part about it, and incredible visuals. They, it really is amazing animation. Uh, Best Fiend is a casual game that can play, well, anyone can play. Adults, of course, can play as well. And you can spend as much or as little time as you like. Again, uh, when I first went on the app, I was astonished at how engaging the, the uh, graphics were. It's really interesting. Unique and exciting puzzle experience. There are many other puzzle games out there, but Best Fiends updates the game monthly with new levels and events, so it never gets old. Find a puzzle you like, you keep keep going back to it treats the game like a service for its players. This game has over 100 million downloads globally. It does not require the internet to play. It's great for traveling. And uh, you can collect tons of characters. I got my sons to play this game. Uh, I enjoyed the puzzles. I really, I, the progress I made in terms of sort of challenging myself has been very interesting and engaging and it's a great way to engage your family as well. And engage your brain with fun puzzles and collect all that great graphic material, those cute characters. Five-star rated mobile puzzle game on the Apple App Store and Google Play. Download for free. Just get the app at the Apple App Store or Google Play. That is friends without the R, right? Ha ha ha. Best fiends, not best friends. Download best fiends for free on the Apple at the Apple App Store or on Google Play. Check it out today. And now our friends at Upstart, and of course, as many of you found out the hard way, getting into debt is easy, but getting out is hard, especially if your credit score is not great. Now, thankfully, we've got upstart.com. I've told you about these guys before. Revolutionary lending platform that knows you're more than just your credit score. Smarter interest rates to help you pay off high interest rate credit card debt. Upstart goes beyond traditional credit score when assessing your credit worthiness. They reward you based on who you are, your education, your job history. It's a smarter interest rate. Upstart believes you're more than just the credit score. They believe that you count who you are, what your life story has been. Your track record is important and they make it fast, simple, and easy to check your rate in just a few minutes. Best part, once loan is approved and accepted, most people get their funds the very next business day. The next day, over 300,000 people have used Upstart to pay off credit cards or meet their financial goals. Free yourself from the burden of high interest rate card debt by consolidating everything into one monthly payment with Upstart. See why Upstart is ranked number one in their category with over 300 businesses on Trustpilot. Hurry to upstart.com slash drdraw. No dot after the doctor, just Dr. Drew. Find out how low your Upstart rate is. Checking your rate only takes a few minutes and it will not affect your credit. That is upstart.com slash D-R-D-R-A-W. One more time, upstart.com slash Dr. Drew. And now back to our show. So, so how does comedy fit into all this? 
Why, why making um, fun? Was that just to get attention away from your sister? It was just the first thing I was good at. It was like the first thing that I was better at than anyone I had ever met. And when met. was that and what was that? Freshman year of college, people told me I should be a comedian. I tried it out. I got laughs. And I was like, oh, I'm naturally good at this. I was always looking for something. Why, is, why can't I just be a, a natural at anything? And I just never was. And I was just so average. And I can't stand average. And... I had a therapist used to yell at me and be like, you're not a beauty. You'll never be, you're average looking and it's enough and oh it's God. fine. And oh I would God, say, that is, that's you nice. can't say that to me. <laughs> no, you would and she'd be like, that. you sh you are average. You don't want to be a model. You'll never, you're not a beauty, Nikki. You're not a beauty. And I'd be like, Jesus, you please stop. You got your mom for a therapist. Yeah, she was really, oh really harsh. God. But it actually kind of helped because it let me release like someone was finally telling me what I've always thought and wasn't going, you're beautiful. You look at yourself. And I'm just like, I don't see it. Someone but, was finally being like, yeah, you're right. You're not beautiful. You know what's interesting about being a famous talent is that you, your appearance and your attractiveness is built on partly on you being Nikki Glaser and your talent. Yeah. And you looking or being different than that would be unpleasant yeah yeah you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. it wouldn't you wouldn't be you which is what we are attracted to i know do, do you I get would that give it all up to be a mo to look like a model i would give up my entire personality i would give up any sense of humor oh. i i just i would i really would oh. people always go no that's because i know that my personality won't fade as quickly as my I'll lose my my. It's sense more of humor. than personality, though, right? It's this whole. But I see the way beautiful women oh my are treated, and I want it. Now I want to yell at you like your like your old therapist. I know, <laughs> I know, it's crazy, but I just, I, I, I don't. I get so jealous of women who are just naturally just like these women that everyone, when you encounter them, they go, "She was so beautiful." Like I have friends that just, it was my sister growing up. I mean, people, my friends, every time she would leave the room. God, your sister's and, so and, pretty. And, okay. I hate her. Oh my but God. I, I know I know what you're talking about. I know people like that. Yes. And, and, well, hang on. Hang on. And what did she, your sister always complain about? Um, I mean, I don't even know. Oh, you don't even listen to her. I don't even I guarantee you, because I've heard it a billion times. I'm smart. I'm capable. I can do things. And they no one get gives them that chance. Yeah. Because they're just a celebrity and whatever. And they think they have preconceived ideas about them. Yeah. And it's it's a and they feel they either don't care or they feel it's a burden. Yeah, no, it's I know it's a burden to be a model and to be that beautiful. And, it's it's it sucks. I've seen it. Um, I just am not I still, <laughs> still want was. I want that sucks is less sucks than my sucks. I still want it. I want it. Oh. I want it so bad. And you know, I mean, I don't know that you're I gonna get sign off on this. I am predicting you're going to get over this. It's, I, it's no way you're not going to get over I, it. You know, you're, I'm, you're, I'm you're, kind of speaking from a place where I was yeah, as I get opposed it. to where I, I am now. I get it. I get I, it. I've, obviously, I've, um, I'm But you're still being, you're still working with it. You're still celibate. You're still it's doing still, these things that. Yeah, it's, I just, yeah, I don't, um, I think, I, I don't know what it is. I just, when I'm with a man, I feel like I, uh, I have to, I'm not good enough. And so I have to like do everything he wants to me to do. And then I hate myself for doing those things. Ooh, and then like what, you know, just like blowing a guy that doesn't deserve it yeah. or because I felt the, or I don't do that anymore though. So I don't know because I don't even want to put myself in a situation where I have to do that. So yeah, I don't yeah. even, I don't even date anymore. I'm just, and I'm reading all these books about like, because in the past, if I like a guy, I pursue him and I'm like, I like you. Let's go. Like, I go after it just like I've gone after my career and it doesn't work. It makes guys run away from me. And so I'm waiting for guys to now come after me and and no one's coming after me. And it's like, and everyone goes, Nick, you're so, so intimidating. And I'm like, oh, well, I don't know what to do then because I, when I go after a guy, it doesn't work. And right, when so I sit back, this? it doesn't work. And it's so like, how about this? How about the, here's where you could, again, you're always in the extremes, right? So how about you, rather than pursuing, you just put someone on notice, like, God, I sure like to date you, or here's my number if you ever get, you know, just some, just some sort of kick the door open a little bit. And if it doesn't work, doesn't work. But if somebody's interested- I do they that, and it keeps not working. 
So I've I've done that. Are you doing I mean, that to married guys or something? So no, it's like, no. So are you sabotaging yourself up from the outset? No, I mean I used to go after guys with girlfriends. That was in my early twenties, and then I moved on to guys that were in different states, and then, <laughs> and then uh, married. And then, no, never then on, married. Then on a ventilator, like, and then <laughs> just different, um, different kind of unavailable. And now I'm um, I'm very into like emotionally unavailable. Oh, and then now now perfect. I'm into guys that are like I want why to be pursue. emotionally available, but like can't. Like they have glimmers of it. So I'm getting closer and closer. Okay. I just, what I, I just realized that I just, uh, my self-esteem needs work still. I, no one should want to be with me yet. I'm not finished. Well, you, you evoke, uh, you know, the, the not being one to be the available guy, right? Yeah. You also evoke codependent guys. Right, okay. that they want to come rescue you and save you and make you feel better and stuff. I'm sure no. you don't even notice those guys. Yeah, but I guarantee actually, you, I don't. Oh. I, I guarantee you that happens. That's what I want. No, you don't. <laughs> you, you want to, you want somebody healthy. Yeah, it's. I don't. You even... would destroy somebody who came to take care of you. Really? Yep. Okay. I mean, you can have somebody take care of you, but I mean, somebody who's, who's truly in that codependent. I'm attracted mode. to people that remind me of me a, a lot of times. Right. I feel like I date a lot of guys that are just. And what I've been encountering more so than ever recently is every guy I like, I just realize they want, they want what I have. They go, wait, so how, how did you get to a place where you don't have sex outside of a relationship? I want to do that. And I'm like, wait, are you asking how to have sex with me? Or they're like, <laughs> no, I just really want to be able to not have to have sex with every girl that I'm like, oh, so now I'm just like your therapist. Like <laughs> guys just want, how did you get that gig? How did you... The, uh, you know, guys dating other get... comedians. Yeah, Ooh, yeah, that's not good. Anyway, just saying. I know we've been talking to a lot of them here. I'm just guessing. <laughs> well, then why should I be with someone? Why should anyone want to be with me? I'm a comedian. Uh, You're telling no, me don't be with comedians. No, 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 no. I'm saying two comedians. Right, it's a little different. Tom and Christina. Uh, and, and no other example. Uh, right. <laughs> I'm just playing Bobby the odds. Bobby and Rich. Just playing the odds. Uh huh. All right, let's get some calls and and have we have we swept the floor with you? Are you good? I mean, no, I feel like an open wound actually. Well, we close it back up. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't think we've resolved any. I wanted to like accomplish something with you here. Well, I I okay. You just open me up. I'm gonna leave here. I'm gonna bleed all over the car on the way back. I'm gonna cr I'm gonna get on the phone and go like, what did I just talk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I feel like I've revealed too much. I feel like this is the worst. If anyone is interested in dating me and they come across this, bye. It was no, nice. Thank you for the, considering. That's the codependent part. Thank you for considering even like being into me. And now by this, you've turned this off because you're no longer in considering <laughs> dating me. Not because the show wasn't entertaining, but because you've moved on to go, uh, I don't know, see what any other female comic is up to. This is just, this is the worst thing for my, for my brand as a potential wife. No, I disagree. You disagree? Okay, good. I disagree. And, well, you and, just like, yeah, like let's leave this in a way where it's like, oh, Nikki, you might be a good partner someday to someone. There's, there's no you, you missed as I, which does not surprise me. Everything I've been saying, which is that it's, it makes as somebody who cares about you. It's sad to hear you say this I stuff. I know, I don't it is be sad. It, it is so it makes me sad. It triggers my codependency, so I know that other codependents are going to be interested in rescuing you and saving you Ugh. right yeah that disgusts me don't right. you dare Thank slide you. into my dms and try to that, rescue me i have no interest I, in what you have to say I, sir so, not you right. you can rescue me any time i, I guess. Just kick off my shoe okay i'm a mess keep going okay so and, you think and, codependents and, are gonna be yeah and and then the, well, both the unavailable and the codependents right you get the two sides of the same coin yeah. right it's all kind of narcissism coming after you yes right? yeah. i love narcissists right and so it's okay, but you're gonna you have to find our. We always say think um, butterflies, not lightning bolts. I think I've told you this before. Mm. Uh, so a narcissist that gives you like lightning bolts, I gotta be with that person. That's gonna be bad times. Okay. So, uh, but if it's somebody like I'm okay, I, I could see that maybe that could grow into something. Okay. More. Okay. Okay. Butterflies, and, not and, lightning yeah, bolts. Butterflies, not lightning bolts. And and then I feel like, and this I can't really do this for you but i feel like somebody deeply attuned attached to you i feel like you're missing a little attachment piece mm. do you know what i mean by that yeah okay i'm i'm right now trying to attach to you a little bit mm -hmm. does that feel comfortable to you yeah it does feel comfortable okay yeah. that's what you need you need lots of somebody just deeply att att attuning to you okay 
You don't trust it? It makes me a little uncomfortable, I gotta it be should. honest. Good. Yeah. It yeah. should. That it, it should be it should not feel right. Yeah. Okay. And so that's what that's what you need is somebody that can bring you into that closeness. I want someone to like And I'm not talking romantic, I'm talking about therapist. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, to Yeah, the the, the um Well what romantic... about my therapist calling me and saying, I'm the only one who loves you? I love you, Nikki. I'm the only one who loves you. Not good. <laughs> I let her go. Good. A while okay, ago. Good. She was the worst. Woo. Yeah. And what what are the letters after these people's names? Oh God! You know what I mean. You you need somebody with good degree of training. Yeah, you know what I'm I'd never checked on this bitch. She was out <laughs> of her apartment. She was 80 years old. I'm funny. You've never said a funny thing in your life. You've been in here. How many? I've never laughed once. You're a comedian. Uh, well, I'm funny. You've never you've never made me laugh. And I'm like, uh, so then we, we she would make me go to group therapy too with her other clients, and then I would kill in there and be like, see, bitch. And so I never. <laughs> they loved me, but I could never, I was always trying to prove to her that I was successful. I, I, I remember when I got a TV show, my like ads were in the subway and I was like, Donna's going to see and finally acknowledge me. And then she, she never would acknowledge you. I don't care what you do. I don't watch anything you do. I don't read anything you do. I don't care. You're my patient. And I don't, I don't look at you that way. And then our last session together, this bitch asked me to write a blurb for her husband's <gasps> book because they want to appeal to a younger demographic. And I go, oh. um, I knew it. I knew you knew what I did. You, you know that I have some, some value. And then she goes in the other room to go get the book. She's like, I'll give it to you to read. And then she stops. And she goes, is that okay? And I go, I'm actually uncomfortable with that. And she goes, that was a test. And she sat back down and I go, this bitch just lied to my face. That was not a test. And that was the last time I saw her because I was like, I caught her lying. It was crazy. I think I need to help you find the next therapist. Please do. Yeah. Manhattan. N New Manhattan is a, is a cesspool. I know. And, I can't believe how many bad ones. Fortunately, the good ones are super expensive. I'm, uh, you sh yeah. I was paying three seventy five. Oh my woman, God. Twice a week. That's insane. For was she an two analyst? Years. I don't know what she was. A woman wrote, I did a That's podcast insane. where I talked about some eating disorder issues. And this girl wrote to me and said, my therapist could really help you. I just called this woman and then she was my therapist for years and it was so bad, so bad. And I finally got out and I feel like it was the final test. Dumping her was like, okay, good. You've learned. You're too smart for all the kinds of therapy you've had. You could figure all that shit out That's on your own. That's what I keep find, figuring it, out is it, like, I'm smarter than this person. It, it, not, it's not even just smarter than this person. It's like, that's not what you need. Yeah, you yes. got that shit figured out. What you need is on a deeper connection. I want that. Okay, I'm gonna check so out this EFT. Emotion focus therapy. Yep. And, 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 and tell me the person, I'm gonna check it. I, I know the- Oh my God, I can't I believe know, I get Dr. I, I know the founders of that whole field. Okay. And I will check with them. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Now we're good? Wound closed. Wound cl so, not, there's wound, like a little well, butterfly. Some glue. Use yeah, some yeah, glue. yeah, <laughs> there's a little thing. All right, good. A butterfly suture, not a lightning bolt one. Now you're gonna help other people. Mm -hmm. All right. I was divorced earlier in the year after 20 year relationship. Wow, that went into swinging and highly sexual. My new relationship is very vanilla. At times, I find it hard to maintain erection because of the silence and changes, whatever that means, different from before. Outside of the bedroom, things are great. I'm very happy. What could I do to try to redirect my desires of the past into the more healthy and tame sex life I have now? Ooh, 20 years. So he's probably like, uh, as a male, right? Mm -hmm. You think? Maintain yeah, because it's, it's ED. Yeah. It's a, yeah. Uh, and you're going to, he's got to be at least like 45 years old or something, right? Mm -hmm. So he's older, an older woman. So he, he values a good relationship. But he knows what good sex is, and he doesn't have it with this woman. Mm. How would you? How if a woman is just into sort of being still, and that's her that's her go to? I'm not sure you can bring somebody out of that very well. I think watch right. porn together and kind of show them what you're into, and then the girl will kind of get some hints. I I, I like the, where you're going. However, that can really backfire. Really? Yeah. Because not, not only can they feel inadequate and oh, this right. what's wrong with you that you're into that, and it can go bad. I, I maybe gently go into the porn, like slowly expose. Don't go right to the yeah. You, you and your stand up were talking about the drool. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Maybe, maybe we didn't don't need all that stuff. Yeah, but, not... but uh, what do you what do you think? What is he supposed to do? That's Just... a, I think that, that well sometimes you have to make a choice. B bad sex or. 
good and, relationship? And, yeah. Or, oh, yeah. Okay. or sort of not as good as what you had sex, but mm -hmm. still a decent relationship. I mean, you have, sometimes you have to be happy versus excited. Those yeah. are different things. They can go together. They can go together. And it's very fortunate when they do. But sometimes you, you have to decide. I mean. What's I, wrong with just being like, hey, babe, could you could you be more, could you say more things in bed? It would really turn me on. And she would say, I'm not, I don't comfortable. What do I say? I don't know. I don't, I don't like that. You give her a script. <laughs> Read this. Yeah, you give her. Do you like guys talk dirty? Uh, Yeah. Yeah, I like, um, yeah, I like it a lot. I don't, but I, I I can't come up with stuff to say. So I struggle. I, I would probably be like that woman. I'm kind of quiet. I try to come up with stuff, but like I like when a guy talks dirty for sure. I, I like to just be silent and told what to do. Okay. I, I really like to be um, the submissive role. But that's different. The, being Silent and being told what to do is different than talking dirty. Yes. So you like both those things. No, I like to be silent and told what to no, do. No, no, I no. like them to talk dirty. And talk dirty. Okay, yes. got it. I'm 16 year old living in the great city of New York. I recently discovered that it's normal to be, that it is normal to be able to retract, retract the foreskin. That was concerning because it is impossible for me to retract my foreskin past the head of the penis. I have seen fully retracted foreskin in porn. Thank God for porn. Mm. But until learning that it was normal, I thought it was a medical abnormality similar to prolapsed anus. Don't ask. Uh, what should I do with sex be an issue? 16 year old. Wait, uh, what is going on? Uh, uh, he can't Nadal? pull back his foreskin he's gonna, all the way? He's going to show you is what it a frenulum? No, what phimosis. Is it? PH, it. phimosis. He's going to show you what a phimosis is. It's one of the most common reasons for a uh, male circumcision. Let's read it. Oh, there it is. So phimosis is, see that one uh, in the middle? Oh, okay. There, that one. He can't get the head of the penis out because it's narrowed in the foreskin. Oh, gotcha. And when they try to bring it out, it either strangles the head of the penis or it tears the foreskin. Ow. And really the treatment is circumcision. Uh, so mm -hmm. you see the circumcision there in the picture as pictured. And How so- How often does this happen to uncircumcised men? A lot. Okay, and so there is, is a reason for circumcision. Yes, there is. And, uh, and circumcision as an adult is kind of, kind of unpleasant. And uh, and as a baby, it's unpleasant. Huh? It's got to be unpleasant as a baby. We're not they, checking they, in with these babies. They don't remember, but it's they don't seem to like it. They numb it up, and they don't seem to have any reaction at all. R yeah. What? They shriek, yeah. and they're bleeding. No, no. Oh, no, no, not anymore. Really? No? no? no, no okay, no, no, good. No. Yeah, good. Hold on. What's the recovery like if an adult two got weeks, a circumcision? Two weeks. You planning something? No. <laughs> no. Two weeks. No, two I'm weeks already kind of, circumcised. Kind of, kind of uncomfortable. Uh, fast forward five years, my right testicle is three times bigger and different shape than the other. One is like a gumball shape. The other is like a jumbo egg. Wow. After a scan years ago, doctor says it's probably just fluid and will, it will drain itself. Well, that's not necessarily true. That was two years ago and still nothing. What is your opinion? You have a cystocele or a spermatocele, something like that. You get cysts on your testes. Mm. And they can either be blood or sperm or just fluid. And they can get kind of big and they can be kind of painful sometimes. They can even protect fertility sometimes. Um, they don't tend to go away in my experience. Okay. So that's something you don't worry about. Can it, I give my diagnosis? Yes. Are you using the Hitachi wand on one side of your ball? <laughs> Too much. Does that's look, what that's what it could be. Does it look like a squid? From my perspective. Squid. <laughs> does, it, does, your, does your testy look like a squid? <laughs> Sorry, I generally do not incorporate mommy speak into emails, so I will just get into it. On your podcast with Jessa Reed, Jessa is a recovering addict, uh, you were describing the accumulation of methamphetamines into semen. Since meth is concentrated about five times higher in semen than the blood. Oh, whoa. Yeah, so nice. you can get high eh? off of your guy's supply? This got me wondering if anyone has ever failed a drug test because of a BJ. Oh, Alternatively, wow. this would be a usable defense for failing a drug test. Just curious. You know, I've had so many goofy things happen with patients and drug tests. I do believe this has been tried on me. And I had to say it's possible. Oh, wow. I had to say it's possible. And it was not from BJ. It was from genital contact, genital sex. Got it. And uh, and, it, and it's, I guess, theoretically possible. I, I had a question. We did an After Dark show in Car on Caroline's on Broadway, which I was, yeah. yeah. And one of the questions was, if I'm, my girlfriend's severely allergic to penicillin, what if, because it is constant, there is some in the semen, and yes, the woman could have an allergic reaction to the penicillin. Jesus. Yeah, it's unusual, but it could happen. Uh... Hi, I'm Brandon. I'm 25 from Arizona. Why does running make me feel like I have to pee? I've had my prostate checked. Is the sauce everything healthy? Do I have a problem? Piss on me, beat, eat, beat me. <laughs> uh, I don't have a good risk. It's just, it's usually, 
it's just an irritation of the urethra and the bladder night that gives that sense of needing to pee. And for males, it tends to get into the prostate. Do you ever have anything funny with needing to pee? Like that's funny irritation? Mm -mm. Not after sex or anything? Mm -mm. Ever? No. Never. No, yeah. you got, you no I've squirted once and it was like right before it. I was like, I feel like I have to pee. And then, you know. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. It was awesome. Was it pee or was it? No. I instantly was like, is it pee? <laughs> I scooped it up because I needed to know because that's the thing. It's like, is it pee? And it was so much. I couldn't believe it. I didn't even try. It just happened. And I went and it was not pee. And it dry, It dried. I smelled it later. Not pee. It took like three days to dry too. It was so much. It was like a puddle that mosquitoes could breed in. It was crazy. <laughs> and was the, the partner proud of himself? No, it was. Well, yeah. Oh, by she yourself. Was. It was she by was. yourself. She was, was very you? proud of herself. <laughs> Uh, did you try to you know the, I didn't see men and women so a man if that happened to him would be immediately like okay I gotta do that again yeah D did that happen to you where you were like I've gotta find that again or no yeah I've been trying but it took I know what it takes it takes like it was like my third orgasm in a row. Yeah. And so usually after one, I'm like, I'm done. That just took so long. It takes me so long to come anyway. So um, the idea of, of recreating that is just exhaustive. And I'm, I never, uh, so, I never do it. Different between men and women. Uh, Tom from Alberta, 26 year old male, normal health. I had a heart, thought I had a heart attack a few weeks ago, but the ER doctor said it's probably just anxiety. I'm okay with that. But when I watch movies or listen to podcasts that reference illness or injuries, I feel that part of my body hurt. Mm. Brain aneurysm on TV, my skull hurts. Heart attack on podcasts, my chest hurts. I don't want to self-medicate, but uh, I really don't want to medicate in general. What should I do? Can shrooms have, have an adverse effect on anxiety? Yes, they can. In fact, I just saw an article today. They were saying a single shroom uh, exposure can exacerbate underlying psychiatric stuff and anxiety disorder oh, no. is, is, an, is a psychiatric disorder. However... Do you have somatiz som somatizing with your anxiety disorders? It's very common to have, if you have generalized anxiety to also feel everything in your body and no. worry about your body and stuff like no, that. No, but I have friends that have that where they think they're choking on something. Yeah. Like wh whenever my friend Andrew, who I bring on the road with me, gets oh. nervous before shows, he'll just go, <clears throat> <clears throat> and I go, oh, he's going on stage soon. I'm like, you, there's nothing in your throat. Stop. Like I scream at him because I'm like, it's just, what are you coughing about? But it just, that's how it happens. Well, there's, some, there's a classic thing called globus hystericus, which is like a fist coming up in your neck. Oh it feels God. like it, it yeah, feels yeah. like and then people can cough and choke and stuff like that feeling this thing in their neck mm -hmm. i bet he has globus he he might he has driven himself to the er because he thinks there's a, a carpet fiber in his <laughs> in his esophagus and in his lung that's going to kill him it's globus i mean Come it's look up globus, globus but you know what has helped him is um not drinking anymore and uh like meditation and um yeah. mindfulness shocking yeah. Joking. All right. Now let's try to get a voice. Let's see if this works. Here we go. Hi, Dr. Drew. This is Ryan. Ryan. Uh, I had a question about masturbation because mm -hmm. I realize I've never heard an actual legitimate doctor's opinion about how much is actually healthy mm -hmm. or, you know, unhealthy. Mm -hmm. um, when I ask my friends or the internet, it's either you should do it as much as possible or uh, don't do it at all. Like, I have friends who legitimately believe that you should only ejaculate through wet dreams, which sounds fucking ridiculous to me. Yeah. But um, I can also see how it can get unhealthy and like a like a, a bad habit. Like an addiction. If you do it like too much, it can right. be like a chronic habit. Piss on me and beat me, as they say. And uh, shout out to all the tiktards out there and Uncle Terry. <laughs> and see you later. Yeah, Christina's tick. Does she play? Christina's TikToks have been out of control lately. By the way, Just, I, I've been I'm <laughs> trying to understand them. I'm like, oh my god, I got to go back on your mom's house to figure them out. Um, but uh, so, what do you think? Um, I think that uh, I think that like more than twice a day is too much. I, it's different people are different. I mean, yeah. there are some people that they kind of almost have to do that. That's like, yeah, yeah. But if it affects functioning, right. it's a problem. It affects relationship. It affects your working. If you're, if you're, if you're getting doing it in places that you could maybe get in trouble for. Getting addicted to porn with it. Mm -hmm. if, it if it's something you don't, it has control over you and you are doing it excessively, particularly if you're hurting yourself physically. Right. Like you're, you're squirting after the third time or something. Yeah. <laughs> it's like your soul comes out. I mean. You're drowning your pet <laughs> gerbil. So... But but it, it is a it is an interesting topic. It's been asked to me many many times over the years on Loveline, and I, it's 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 a hard question to answer, and it's differing depending on people's individual biology. To be fair, uh, what is next? 
voice message. Hi, Dr. Drew. Uh, Long time fan, been listening since uh, Love Line. Uh, my name is Brian. I'm from Michigan. Brian. Um, a couple of months ago, I had a spinal fusion surgery. Mm-hmm. Um, had a problem with my L4, L5 mm. uh, disc space. And since then, every time uh, I make a brown or uh, I fart, uh, my ears get hot. And I was just wondering, like, uh, what's going on there? That is weird. Thanks. I do not have a good explanation for that. I'm wondering if he's on some medication that might be mm. causing that. But there's nothing special about that. I wouldn't worry about it. I mean, it's, again, you know, when we have discharges of any type, our autonomic system is engaged. And some people sneeze and they get, you know, engorgement of the, the, the veins in the nose. And the ears it seems to make sense to me as something that could happen as well. But, you know, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of back surgeries generally. Yeah. Not a fan. I think people, you know, you know like Dr. Sarno. Yep. Like, I, I, I just... I feel like most people's back stuff is... It's transient. It goes away. It's related to stress. Yeah. I mean, you're a tall person, so you probably have some back stuff, right? It Not anymore because I read that book, and whenever my back acts up, I go, bitch, what's going on with you? Let's investigate. And then as soon as I can target what I'm stressed out about, it goes away. And it maybe will show up in a migraine or something else, but it, it will move away from my back. Perfect. Next. Hey, Dr. Drew. My name is Dave. Dave. Um, I just had a question. I looked on Google for this a while back, and I couldn't really find an answer. I was about 20, and me and my girlfriend at the time, she was going down on me. And when it got, when I got to the point of coming, instead of that, it was very liquidy, and I thought it might be pee. I'm not sure. Um, I like people with multiple question was, marks after they stay. Mm-hmm. I was still hard, and she did it again, and I did the same thing within two minutes. Hmm. Still not quite sure why she kept doing it. <laughs> um, and then about two minutes later, the exact same shit happened. What is that? It's never happened before. It's never happened since. That's just kind of odd. It is odd. Thank you. You bet. I'm I'm betting you were on like an antihistamine or some sort of medication, oh. and it probably has something to do with retrograde ejaculation, where the ejaculate can go up into the bladder. The oh. the valve isn't quite flipping properly. Nothing to do with mercury. Mercury in retrograde. No, no. Mer- mercury mercury. I just nothing, heard retrograde. Nothing, okay. nothing to do with that. But retrograde ejaculation, mm-hmm. and uh, sometimes nothing comes out, like zero. Wow. Yeah, and uh, it sounds like. Ideal. I was gonna say that's me. I, you know, I had my prostate. I oh was yeah, cancer. So yeah. I'm nothing. No fluid. Oh my god. Clean as a whistle. That's so interesting. Right? Is that what is that like now? Everything like, is, now it's normal. I mean, you're used to no, it now. but everything felt. It feels normal. It's just no fluid produced. Does it feel incom? Did it feel incomplete at first? Were you like, there's something? Did it- no. I will tell you. The only difference is, and and women have almost no like compassion for this that males also in addition to sort of we all kind of need sexual discharge and if it goes a little p- bit of period of time we, we're aware of it right right it goes too long yes well with male there's a fluid built up that you're a, kind of drives it too oh right that doesn't happen which is oh, kind of a relief yeah. oh yes yeah. so you won't have to be like literally empty your balls exactly you're like, they're already empty <laughs> it's not really your balls but yes the, the, okay from the, the fluid Wait, okay. oh, isn't semen in balls? No. What? No. Let me give you a Wait let's a put, second. Up, put up a picture of the prostate and seminal vesicles. Okay. Uh, and uh, the testes just bring out, the, just the sperm comes out of the testes, just the small oh. trickle of sperm. And the fluid comes out of the prostate and accumulates in the seminal vesicles, Got which is it. what fills up. Oh. You see those things on the left there? Those, uh, let's see, it was a good picture of it. Yeah, that picture. Yeah, yeah. See, see, that's what's filling up. No, that's not. Yeah, the seminal vesicles are all filling up, but it's it's both the sperm and the fluid mixing up there. Okay. Right. They come Give, from different places. They come and from. And then they mix together. Exactly. And they come out Give me another together. prostate picture. I thought it was with, one place. No. See, uh, see up there the the prostate's yep. that big uh, coconut looking thing, uh, right there. Yes, and the bladder's above that. I imagine something like that. What's and, the ampulla? Uh, what the hell is that? Wait, so the seminal vesicle is where the semen is coming from. Give us the a better... The prostate is where the... No. The fluid is coming from. All right, that's a better picture. Okay. So so the prostate, you see where that is? Point at it, Nadav. It's the pink thing. There. Okay. And you see that little leaf coming off of it? Yep. That's the seminal vesicles. Okay. So the fluids accumulate there. And and you see how there's a purple thing? That yep. thing? That's where the... 
the sper- sperm li- dribbles in. Okay. Mixes and then, in with the fluid. And then the testicle. Makes the sperm. Okay. Just the sperm cells. Okay. Wow. Wow, huh? And then it goes back up and then out? How does it get out? It's you see the seminal vesicles, right? Okay, so it it, it just it goes it rele- it, a valve opens, it releases from there, and goes right out the urethra. No, oh, no. so you just went the wrong way. So it starts out in the testicle, it goes up the purple tube yep. down there, mixes there with the fluids there. from the prostate. That's the bladder. That's okay, the, yeah, mixes in the purple. Mixes in the prostate. In the, no, mixes in the purple leaf coming out there. Okay, there it mixes from the prostate, and then you see there's a there's a a, a duct that goes out of that leaf. Yes. Go down. Go down. Another yeah. way. That's to the outside world. There we go. And then, and then out. it goes out to the outside world. And then the bladder is shut off. Right. Okay. Whew. We got. We did this. it. We got we there. It. Okay. What is the? Uh, but I don't okay. have that. I don't have the pink thing. Oh, the, that, that's that, what you don't have. Right. No, no. That's a rectum. Jesus, that thing. <laughs> <laughs> We're learning so much about you. <laughs> I have a rectum. For God's sakes. So, yes. Yeah. Okay, prostate cancer was really fun. Was oh my fun. God. Yeah. It was not a good time. Um, is how deadly is that? It depends on. Were you scared? Uh, I was pissed. I, I got it at fifty. I'm like, I because my uncle had my dad. I figured I'd get it around seventy five. I'm oh. like, God, God damn it, at fifty, oh, really? really? But I'm also, you know, I'm an internist, so I know if you got to get a cancer, that's a that's the one you. That's want. the one to get. That's the one. And get. weren't weren't you almost? I know that's. It would have been nice to push it, but isn't I your did. body? Isn't your body? Like to to be seventy five when you get it, but aren't you more well equipped to beat yes, it yes. At, at fifty? Yes, Isn't but I went on like... active surveillance anyway. I pushed I pushed it back a few years, and oh, then, wow. then when it started changing a little bit, I was like, "That's it, time." Let's just get it out there. Yeah, and yeah. it was how? What was the recovery on that? I we did it across Fourth of July weekend. I was still doing my HLN show, mm-hmm. and I worked after the weekend. Oh wow! But I had to lie down on all the commercial breaks. Oh no! And, and it's a live TV show, right? Yeah. And I oh, wow. um. I was not right for two years, to be fair. But I, but but I was still functioning normally. I just would fatigue easily and that mm-hmm. kind of thing. And I just I didn't know quite, I didn't fully recognize. I'm 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 like you in the sense I'm very demanding and perfectionistic and dri- driven all that stuff. Yeah. And sometimes you don't you don't listen. You can't don't know quite what's going on. You just know you can't do what you want to do, and it just like pisses you off. Yeah. Mm. So, but what was going on then? You were just having a tr- trouble recovering from the surgery itself, or uh, I don't know whether it was the tissue damage or the anesthesia, because mm-hmm. under anesthesia, like five six hours, you know. Wow. And so, whatever it was it, and, and I and I know that I react badly to that stuff. Yeah. It just takes me forever to. So it recover. took you two years to feel normal to feel again. normal. I mean, Do you six feel months completely normal completely again now? Normal. Oh, that's so great. Okay, six six months, I felt normal ish. Yeah. But but at the end of two years, I was like, oh yeah, I wasn't really quite didn't have the same stamina I'm used to it. So, Even mentally, a little bit. Stamina. Stamina. Yeah, just yeah, like like. Just yeah. This, you know, what what what's the word for that? Like vitality. Mm-hmm. I didn't have the same vitality. Yep. So. Well, I'm glad yep. we got you back. Yep. We're back. Well, listen. Speaking of getting back, um, it's a privilege to see you always. Always. Uh, yeah, I yeah. really enjoy talking to you. I, I enjoy, love talking to you. I enjoy your work. I love talking to you. I love that we're friends. I can't and believe I'm friends with Doctor Guru. Get, Are you kidding me? This is un- insane. And we're gonna get you a good EFT person. Yeah, I'm gonna right? be great. I'm gonna be pissed if you don't like start working on this. No, no, no. I okay. I need to. I'm tired of feeling this way. Right. Yeah. And, and it's not. I get that it's not as bad as we we plumbed we plumbed the the. No, it can be bad. It's it's. I have a one. It's a, around my period too. I gotta be honest. Right now, it, it was two. It's a day before my period. I start having these thoughts that is are that just. Is that today? T- my period is today. Oh uh, boy. Yeah. So it you was just two recovered. days ago. You're in the recovering phase. Yeah, and I just am very sensitive, and 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 I just w- once a month I have thoughts that are just insane. Just be- like have you I don't recommend about treating that. I just am now beginning to relate it to my hormones. PMDD, and, right? PMDD. Is that depressive disorder? Remenstrual depressive disorder, yeah. Yeah, where like you want to kill yourself or you have yeah. like, you don't want, like I'm never going to kill myself, just the, but you the, just have the thoughts of it. The, the, well, thoughts of hurting yourself are of course sign of depression, but, right. but even just irritability and sensitivity more. You know. I want to be clear. I don't ever want to kill myself. I, get I just it. have the, it's, it's, it's different because I just, I, I need to be clear for myself too, mm-hmm. because it's just, I, I, I swear to God, it comes on like the sniffles is like, you should die. Like well, it's, that's that's, what, that's that's how I don't even conjure it. But that's why it sounds so PMDD. Yeah, it's it, out of it, my control. It really does. And and 
And it's just a thought, right? It's not an intent. It's not a so plan. You can treat just, that. Yeah. With what? We'll talk. After okay, that. sweet. Okay. All right, Nikki, again, what do you got coming up? Where do um, we go? Go to Nikki Again, NikkiGlazer.com. Come see me on tour. Um, go uh, listen she won't to my talk podcast. About any of this. She won't talk about this depressing stuff on the comedy Oh, show. I definitely so, do. <laughs> I not, not definitely do. But in a do. comedic way. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm always uh, real. Um, you you, you up is my squid, podcast. Her squid and her jellyfish. Yeah, you, you can hear. But, but on my, I mean, last week on my podcast, I, like, cried about stuff. Like, I am very open all the time. So this was really fun for me. Okay, uh, you up is the podcast. You up is the radio show nikkiglazer.com check out my special on netflix called bangin it just released and um yeah and and i have a special perfect on comedy central um yeah Ooh, i don't think i've seen that that's the one you saw oh that's what i saw loved. yeah okay yeah. it was it, and let me just say now that I'm, I'm getting more of a picture of your perfectionism i i understand what drove you to make it it was perfect yeah it was just right but oh, it thanks. was not perfect to the point of like people would be aware of it. I was just kind of aware that it was just, you really work, you really made sure it was Thank just so. Thank you. So. It's very funny. I recommend it very highly. You won't be aware that she's working so hard on it, so miserable in her real life. That's no, I'm so not. Funny. I'm happy, I swear. So. All right, everybody, we'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> All right. you. All conversations and information exchanged during participation in the Dr. Drew After Dark podcast or interaction on the drdrew.com website is intended for educational and entertainment purposes only. Do not confuse this with treatment or physician medical advice or direction per se. You must always follow your medical professional's advice and direction. Nothing on these podcasts or posted on this site supplements or supersedes the relationship and direction of your medical caretakers. Please understand, I am not playing the role of physician in this environment per se. I'm educating. I am a licensed physician with specialty boards in American Board of Internal Medicine and American Board of Addiction Medicine.